Uh, in some of the things that you talked about in your presentation earlier in this meeting, you actually uh, have started to identify other more disturbing trends around impact factor and the uh, bogus metrics that are being put forward by these predatory journals. And per perhaps you can give a little bit of early insight into this uh, so that people can build that awareness as well. Sure. There are a number of new companies that are emerging, uh, chiefly in South Asia, that uh, pretend to be uh, exactly like the impact factor. They offer a service to publishers, actually, and they assign impact factors to the publisher's journals. But um, unlike the authentic impact factor, uh, which is uh, from a product called Journal Citation Reports, these are mostly just made-up numbers. And the publishers will use these numbers to make you think that the jur their journals are legitimate and high impact. Um, the reason they do it is because they want your money and they know we all want to publish in the top journals. So they'll uh, masquerade their journals or, or, or make them look like their uh, top authentic uh, high impact journals when in fact they're really not. In fact, uh, there can be journals uh, fake journals that are uh, you know, just less than a year old that the companies say they have impact factors, but that's impossible because the true impact factor takes several years before uh, a journal can even earn a, an impact factor. Yes, and, and quite honestly, the, the Thomson Reuters, uh, from a um, trademark point of view, really owns and controls the dissemination of impact factor, and, uh, and it is a very long process. It is very long, and you'll see lots of companies coming up with uh, interesting and very clever names that incorporate the term impact factor, like global impact factor or universal impact factor. There's really only one company that scholars uh, recognize worldwide that offers the impact factor, and that is Thomson Reuters and their product journal citations report. So be very careful when a journal or a publisher tells you that the journal has an impact factor. It, it, could require some investigation, and if you have any doubt, make sure to follow up on it and ask your librarian uh, for advice. Okay. Um, many people are aware that uh, you actually manage a list of journals that you identify as being predatory by your terms, uh, and uh, it is a, an effort that you have been doing for a fair amount of time, so perhaps you can uh, direct the viewers to where they can go for this information and talk a little bit about what you have been trying to do in order to index um, bogus journals and predatory journals. Sure. I have two lists that I make available on my blog. One is a list of what I call predatory or questionable publishers. And the overall mission of my blog is to help researchers avoid uh, being uh, ripped off or scammed by uh, the, the malevolent publishers. So I have a list of publishers and it's my recommendation that you not submit papers to those publishers and there are about 400 of them on the list. The second list is what I call standalone journals. These are journals that aren't really published by a publisher, they're just a one journal by itself on a web page. So I have about 200 of those on the list, and I recommend that scholars avoid uh, submitting their work to these journals as well. The URL for my website is scholarlyoa.com. Okay, scholarlyoa.com, that's easy to remember. Um, perhaps we can get uh, more philosophical uh, about where you think open access is going uh, given the insatiable need for publishing trends coming out of Asia. Uh, are you concerned? Are you open-minded? Are you uh, uh, just curious where you think the industry is going? Well, open access offers a lot of advantages to, uh, to readers, of course, because it makes the content available for free, but it also has some advantages for the authors because it uh, widely exposes their work all over the world. Anybody can read your paper when it's published open access, and that's a very good thing. Um, you'll get more downloads, more people will see your, your work. Uh, you uh, may get cited more because your paper is published in an open access journal. 
Uh, open access continues to grow, and that's a good thing. The only problem is that the number of predatory publishers is also growing, and we need uh, more uh, industry focus on this problem and need to come up with strategies to uh, educate people about them, and uh, hopefully uh, if enough people just ignore the predatory publishers, they'll, they'll go away and we can focus on uh, supporting the high quality journals. Yeah, I, I personally think that open access is definitely here to stay. It serves a, a, a societal need because there are many, much of the literature is now read by non-researchers. Uh, someone who has cancer, someone who is looking for answers in the scientific literature. Um, the unfortunate thing, in getting back to predatory publishers, is they are in no way to really differentiate what is a good publisher and what isn't a good publisher. Right, and unfortunately many of them have been fooled by the predatory publishers. Mm -hmm. um, so as we round up, are there any other types of things that I may not have uh, um, probed about that you are, are things that are near and dear to you um, that you'd like to talk about? What type of messages would you like to give Asian authors about how to approach their career and publish? The main thing I would say is uh, resist the strong temptation to uh, take an easy publishing route. Uh, if, a, if a publisher promises you that your paper will be published in seven days or ten days, that's too fast and it will end up hurting you in the long run. Uh, it's better for your career, over the length of your career, uh, to have top quality papers in the best possible journals that you can publish in. And that takes more work and it can take more time, but you, you yourself will benefit from it greatly over the course of your career. Uh, and if you, if you publish in a low quality journal, especially earlier in your career, that could hurt you very much later in, in, in 10 years from now or 20 years from now. So always do your best work and always try to submit your work to the best possible journal that you can. Uh, two things that are important and obviously is the PubMed allocation of a duplicate paper or extraction of a paper and these, these are very hurtful for one's career because it, it is essentially a black mark that follows you forever. Right, and Google will will keep the data and when people search your name they'll see uh, the retraction or the duplicate publication or association with plagiarism and that can hurt one's career greatly. So always do your best work and always do uh, honest work and uh, stick with the best possible journals that you can. That's great. Uh, so again, I'm Don Samulak, President U.S. Operations of Editage uh, here at the um, 2014 annual meeting of the Council of Science Editors in San Antonio, and I've been speaking with Jeffrey Beal. Thank you. Thank you.